Hey guys, it's Alex, and I'm here with another of my top 5 nonfiction recommendation videos. As I'm sure most of you are aware by now, if you pay attention to my videos at all, Nonfiction November is coming up, and I decided to do a full month of themed top 5 nonfiction recommendations. Today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 memoirs. I personally love memoirs because they are more narrative nonfiction. They're telling a story of a person's life, and so often they do read quite similarly to fiction. I think memoirs are a really easy way to get into reading nonfiction for someone who's possibly a nonfiction beginner or doesn't know where to start. If you find an interesting person, or even any person, regardless of if you know them or not, most people have an interesting story to tell if they're writing a memoir of their life. In general, most people just have interesting stories to tell. I absolutely love memoirs, even if I've never heard of the person before, because they're so wonderful and interesting to read, so here are some of my favorites. The first memoir I have to recommend is Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley. I've talked about this book on my channel before, I read it about a year and a half ago, and I think the book review on, I did on this is the first book review I ever did on my channel, and I'm not going to link it, you're welcome. But I really did enjoy this book. It tells the story of Lucy Greeley, who as a young child was diagnosed with an incredibly deadly cancer, and as a result of the cancer, she had to have a good portion of her jaw removed. She survived, so clearly that is the more important thing, but she grew up as a very young child, missing a significant portion of her jaw, and this had a huge impact on her life. She suffered from depression and eventually drug addiction, and lived all in all, a very sad life, a very depressing life, but she was an incredibly talented writer. She was first and foremost a poet, and I believe this is the only book that she wrote, although I might be wrong about that. She might have written another book. But I really enjoyed this book. It's so beautifully written. I love finding books written by poets because their prose is just genuinely so beautiful to read most of the time. It's one of my favorite things, and I think this book is just a wonderful read, although it is quite dreary, so be prepared for that if you pick this one up. The next book I have to recommend is The Nazi Officer's Wife by Edith Hahn Beer. This tells the story of Edith Hahn Beer growing up in Nazi Germany as a Jewish woman. So many books about Jews in Nazi Germany take one of two routes. They either tell the story of the concentration camps or they tell the story of the Jews who were in hiding. But Edith Hahn Beer was neither of these things. She was hiding, but she was hiding rather in plain sight. She got papers from a friend of hers and actually wound up marrying a man who was a Nazi officer. So she was involved in a lot of social events and met a lot of Nazis and hid the fact that she was a Jewish woman for years until the Nazis fell. It's such an interesting book. I really love learning about the culture and the society of Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s, and I think this is one of the best memoirs that I've read of the time. I would highly recommend this book to anyone who's trying to learn more about Nazi Germany, or anyone who just really likes a good historical memoir. And then we have Love Affair by Leslie Ann Kenton. The tagline to this book is a memoir of a forbidden father-daughter union. I was very hesitant going into this book because I thought it could potentially turn into a hate read. It does very much feel like by the title and the tagline, it could be romanticizing the abuse of a father and his daughter, but it's not. It's not doing that at all. I think Leslie Kenton does a wonderful job of being honest about what happened. She doesn't shy away from the word rape, but she also doesn't shy away from the fact that she loved her father because he was her father even after the horrible things he'd done, he'd also done wonderful things for her. And it's a beautiful, heartbreaking story of her life, and she also delves into some of the issues she had later in life because of his abuse. It's a very heavy, heavy subject, but her writing is so beautiful, and I don't often expect that in memoirs that are of fairly famous people. Her father was Stan Kenton, who was a very famous jazz composer, I believe. This is all in all just a wonderful book, and genuinely one of my favorite books of all time. I was so surprised by how much I love this book, but it's just amazingly well done, and I can't wait to read it again at some point. And next is Fast Girl, A Life Spent Running for Madness by Susie Favor Hamilton. Hamilton was a very well-known Olympic runner. She was best known for kind of choking at the Olympics. She fell at one point, 
and cited exhaustion or stress, but in her book she really delves deep into her struggle with bipolar disorder and how that's impacted her life. She was also caught up in a scandal a few years after the Olympics. She was caught working as a high-class escort, and I think she does a really good job of explaining that in her book and not talking down to sex workers in general or talking about how sex work is bad. She really focuses on why it was bad for her, but doesn't judge the other women who are involved in sex work, and I think that was really important for me in this book because I was concerned about that aspect. All in all, it was a really interesting, really deep book. I don't think I was expecting that much from her, but I felt like I gained a lot of insights into her life, and I really love insightful nonfiction, where I learn more about people and the whys behind their behavior, and I really did with this book. And if you're interested in Olympic running, or if you're interested in mental health, I really think this would be a worthwhile book to read. And the final book on this list is Counselor by Ted Sorensen. This is quite a chunker, but it's such an interesting memoir. Ted Sorensen was an advisor to Kennedy, one of the top advisors, I believe. He tells the story of his life in this book. I'd never heard of him before picking it up. I was just a pretentious teenager, and I was like 16 at the time and found it at the library. I have since bought myself a copy, so that should tell you how much I enjoyed this. But I learned so much about the 60s, about Kennedy, about Sorensen himself. But as much as this is a memoir of Ted Sorensen, it's also part biography of Kennedy because he spends, I think, more time talking about Kennedy than he does himself. He also has a biography on Kennedy that I at some point really want to read. But this book was so interesting, so well done, and honestly surprisingly accessible because I did read it as a teenager and really, really enjoyed it. If you're interested in politics, especially past presidents, or Kennedy specifically, I think this is a quite a worthwhile read. I will say that he does take a very positive view of Kennedy. He he doesn't critique anything at all, and even Kennedy's failures he sort of spins as, well, things happen, or every man has his faults and then just sort of skims over them really quick. So if you're looking for a more critical view on Kennedy, this definitely isn't your book. But I enjoyed it anyway, and I just thought it was a really interesting viewpoint into the Kennedy administration. So definitely worth your time if you're interested in this. Let me know down below what some of your favorite memoirs are. I am always really interested in what everyone else is reading, and memoirs are one of my favorite things, but it can be so hard to find specific good ones because there are so many out there with about a variety of people. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye!